Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our third symposium already. Time does fly. Anybody been to all three? Oh, a few hands there. Well done. Congratulations. We should get a medal. That's that, that come every year. Um, it was great to see so many hands that had been last year. Obviously, we did it right last year. Um, I think the challenge for us this year was how on earth do we match last year's, because if he was at last year's, I'm sure you'll agree it was, it was a pretty special day. But I think we've done it. Um, we've d dug into our bag of um, contacts, networks, and, and thought ideas, and brought some of the best speakers in the world to you today. So um, I hope you enjoy the day as much as we've enjoyed putting it together for you. For those of you who haven't... Um, really had much contact with the Dementia Partnership Project um, yet. I thought I'd just do a very quick overview of the project and also what we've been up to this year and some of the developments that we've had. Um, it helps as the education manager if you can use the technology. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as Rhonda said, really the project was a partnership approach um, set up between ourselves and HACC to look at the challenges and the opportunities that were coming up for community service providers in the years ahead. We all know the, the statistics around dementia prevalence. We all know the increasing number of people that will remain at home with living with dementia. We know the, the, the issues and, and the supports that that's going to cause. Um, and really, HACC and ourselves were, were looking for some answers about how do we actually start to build capacity within community services to respond to, to those changes that were coming into the future. And the Dementia Partnership Project was, was really born out of that. I think the modelling of it, um, what makes it probably a bit different to most things that I've seen in the world, was it was born out of practice. It was born out of the practice and the service development that Alzheimer's WA had done within its own services and the work that it had been doing in partnership already with other organisations. And that's quite unique. Not often these projects come out of academia or out of research and, and university, whereas this really came from the ground up and I think that's probably been its biggest success. Um, the whole point of it was really around person-centredness. It's a phrase that we've heard banded around for 30 years. I mean, Kitwood first started talking about it in the mid-80s. And um, it's almost become, I think, a term that, that, that gets put out there without really much understanding and with very little actual evidence of practice of it. And so we really set about trying to address that in, in the project and, and reinvigorating person-centeredness in many ways after 30 years to look at how do we take that philosophy and how do we actually make it real? How do we make it real for people living with dementia? How do we make it real for support workers that are supporting them? How do we make it real for families? So that was really the goal. Um, and the amazing partnership we have with HACC in, in their financial support of that, but also their guidance in, in helping us put the project together was really important as well. And it is a partnership project. It's about working with service providers. It's about working with each and every one of you. It's not about us doing everything for everybody. So what have we done today? Well, um, we really took a micro and a macro approach to how we might do this. So we did some, we, the modeling that we've done is really around the interventions. Some of them are very intensive and some of them are much of broader awareness and understanding um, I guess, approach to things. So up to date, we've had 11 partnerships. So that's 11 community service organizations um, that have become partners with us. Anybody from an organization that's a partner? Hands up. OK, a few in the room. That's good. Um, I think I'm really pleased that we've had the response we've had to this, this program from the community service providers. We were unsure, were service providers going to open the doors for us? Were they going to be brave enough and have the courage to, to seek out change? Um, were they going to let another organisation in to actually help support them do that? These are all the unknowns when we, we set off on this journey. But I'm really pleased to say that um, I think the, the reputation of Alzheimer's WA as a collaborator has really helped, and, and the success we've had so far has really helped. So the 11 partnerships we've had have been pretty intense work um, and really looking at a whole systems approach, everything from staff training, staff orientation, staff recruitment, um, policy, how you do things, how you schedule, um, what's actually happening when the support worker is in the home, how does the day centre run, how do you set your activity programmes, all of those things um, really we lay out on the table and review and work with the organisation to, to make happen in a, in a person-centred way. The, I guess the other part of the change that we really wanted to see was how do we support the passionate people out there in our industry? Um, because dementia tends to do that. It tends to draw people who are passionate about the cause. And there's a room full of people here, and there's many faces that I've worked with in, in the many years that I've been in WA. Um, and we really wanted to think about how can we actually support them, equip them, give them some authority, get the organisation to support them to actually make change. 
And so we, we set about a, a Dementia Champions program. And to date, we've had 74 ch champions come through that program, which is amazing in three years, I have to say. Um, and I'm very, very privileged to be able to sit in and listen to the champions as they talk about their journey and, and present some of the work that they've been doing. And it's quite amazing the change that's happening out there through this program and through the champions, really. It's, it's the champions that are out there um, doing that work. And those 74 champions come from 35 organisations. So that's a lot of, a lot of reach that this program's now having into the community sector. On a macro level, so how do we raise awareness of person-centeredness? How do we give people resources to get them started on the journey? Um, well, we have our website, which has been up and running now for about 18 months. Um, it's had nearly 10,000, well, just over 9,000 people, 10,000 might be stretching, just over 9,000 people, um, stats and lies and damn lies and all that. Um, <laughs> Just over 9,000 people visit the website, and really we've set it up for all level of staff, from support workers through to managers, um, some information for families as well, and, and I think that's a, a future direction for us. How do we equip families to actually start to think about what should services be providing for me, and how should they be providing them? Um, Facebook, of course, you can't be socially engaged these days without being on Facebook, um, and we have an ever-reaching um, number of people liking us on Facebook, which is really good. And we, we post lots of information and, and educational videos and things like that on Facebook. And the symposiums, which you're a part of today. Um, as I said, each symposium's just been more and more amazing. Last year was just incredible for me um, and for the audience, and I hope this year's is as well. I think we're going to have to get a bigger room next year. <laughs> we sold this one out weeks ago, and we had a very big waiting list of people wanting to be here today, so I think next year we might be in a different venue with a bigger room. The stadium will be finished. The stadium will be finished, yeah. There's a, there's a girl, 60,000 people. <laughs> As I said, one of the, one of the project's um, real strengths is its, it's growth from service provision that, that's been our experience of change. And so we wanted to really um, leverage off that. And so we've been working on a learning center concept where we could actually use the day centers that we have um, and that we've been doing all of our culture change testing in, really, um, as a learning center to actually allow staff to come and experience that. Because I think seeing something firsthand and seeing how it works and why it works is the best learning you can have. So the Mary Chester Center is now a learning center. We invite people to come and, and be a part of that experience. And actually, and we're not saying we do it perfectly. We don't, we're not saying we do it the best in the world. But we are saying that we've made some really good improvements and strides forward in it. So please come and, and see what we've been doing there. This year's been really exciting because we've been ex able to expand the program into regional WA. Um, we all know the challenges of, of distance in, in this state, but the, the program's been successful and we've actually opened our first office in Bunbury this year, so the DPP, um, and we've been able to start looking at the North as well and, and how we connect with the North and partnerships in the Kimberley. So that, that's kind of a very quick overview. It, it, it does it no justice because the work that's been going on is immense, both from our team and from all the partners involved. Um, like Rhonda, doesn't happen without amazing people and very privileged to have an amazing team led by Caroline. Caroline is, where is she? She's out somewhere. <laughs> She's not showing herself. Um, Caroline's a team leader of, of the DPP and does an amazing job with an amazing group of staff. Um, and I would just like to, I guess, honour the, the work of those staff in doing this project. And again, the support of Hacking actually making it happen for us. So thank you. Thank you to everyone who's been involved so far. If you haven't been involved so far, we look forward to you to being involved. Um, the next Dementia Champions intake will open soon. So if you're interested in that, keep your eye out. Um, and have a wonderful, wonderful day with us. Thank you.